what city is it in Portugal? Like for those who don't know, like I was trying to do a bit of research, find out where where it is exactly. Where are you? How far are you from, like say Lisbon or? It's north north of Spain. So usually I fly into Porto Airport, and then it's about forty minutes from Porto. So it's quite close to uh, the border with Spain. So we would have seen you like this year, obviously when you previously were at Villa uh, for the last few years, Alhamdulillah, we've been running the, the Midnight Ramadan League, which uh, you used to always come down and support and get involved in. Uh, I was thinking for a while, you know what, you're going to be, you're going to be here this year if, it, if coronavirus didn't happen. But then I just remembered, obviously, in January the 21st, I think you made the move to to Portugal. Um, how's it, how has it been for you so far at, at Vitoria? Yeah, obviously, first the Ramadan, you got, it was it was good because obviously last last couple of years it's been in off season, hasn't it? So I've not even had training or anything. So it's it's easy for me to come down and it's good as well just to get involved and get get some fitness as well because I won't be doing much. Obviously, off season you don't do too much anyway, so it was good. But yeah, this season obviously the plan was to to finish the end of the season. What I was thinking in my head was that we'll finish the season and I'll probably just get home for 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 Eid. Mm. Obviously. I, the last game was supposed to be on the 17th, 18th of May. So hoping I'd get back for Eid, but... Not going to the plan. Yeah. Did you used to enjoy coming to the, the Midnight Ramadan League when we used to have you at the villa? Yeah, no, it was good. Obviously, my uncle uh, told me that he was putting in a team, and so I, I definitely wanted to come because I, I weren't doing much anyway at the time. and It's just a different, different vibe as well. Now, you know what was nice to see, genuinely, and I mean this genuinely from my heart, obviously, um, and, and how do I say this, like, when you used to come, you were just like, you were really humble, and I think that's a family trait, obviously, I know your uncle, your dad, to an extent, um, and everyone just seems really humble in your family, is that something that you've been brought up on, the humbleness and the grounded? Uh, yeah, I think so, obviously, this, I don't see nothing to be, to show up about, or you know what I mean, there's no... Everyone's everyone's the same, so there's no point coming there and I'm thinking I'm the I'm the big dog or something. Or what I'm gonna now, get I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Obviously, I get that, but it, it's a massive achievement. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, it's a massive, massive thing. Like you know, you're playing for Villa, you're playing for England, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So like, I wasn't obviously naturally expecting you to be any different, but it was just so unique to see. And the more footballers you meet and speak to. Um, you get to see that they're just genuine people. Like they may, like some people. Obviously, unfortunately, sometimes the media or the people portray uh, celebrities or footballers in a different light. But the more and more footballers I meet or speak to, they just seem more genuine and humble, like yourself. Yeah, I, I think that's with anything, though. Really, if you go into any any sort of industry or line of work, you, you'll get some people who who are naturally gonna gonna show off a bit more or, or whatever, but it's just, I've seen football. Is, I think you've just got to be grateful for for the opportunity, to what what you what you live in. Because look look how many people want to do it. You know, what yeah. I mean, there's so many people who would love to be in this situation, and you just got you just got to enjoy it and be humble by it. Do you think there's like added extra pressure on you? Because obviously, when you were coming to the ranks, there was all these articles when Guardiola was at Man City and, you know, everyone is talking about you. Rightly so. Absolutely rightly so. Um, do you do you feel any extra added pre pressure from, like, say, the South Asian community that you need to make it in order to break those barriers down or anything like that at all? Not really. Um, it's just when, when you, when you when I'm like, like in the situation I'm in, when I'm focused on just playing and, and trying to achieve what I what I want to achieve. It's not you don't really think about all that because that's not that's not why why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I'm I love football. I want to I want to have the best career possible. And I'm not really looking at if 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 that happens and as a result of me playing well and achieving stuff, then then it, then it's good. But it's not what I'm gonna put it, put that burden on my shoulders and think I need yeah. to do it because of that. And I think that speaks, uh, um, you know, amazing what you just mentioned now in the sense of your, you know, your mentality is, is definitely seems like very strong. You're, fo you're very focused, alhamdulillah, which is great, obviously. Um, how have you 
acclimatized in Portugal, obviously, when I was speaking to Dr. Zaf, when I was speaking to Adil Nabi last week, um, even Momo Sissoko last night, uh, there's this, there's this um, kind of route where a lot of players are moving away from home to, to, you know, to ensure that their careers, you know, they can follow their passions and careers. How have you acclimatized in, in Portugal? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Obviously, I, uh, I was, um, the situation at Villa for me was, it was, as soon as they got promoted, they spent a lot, they spent loads of money, spent millions, and they brought in about four or five centre-backs. So obviously, you know the situation that you're going, you're going further down the picking order. So I knew I had to get out, and then, alhamdulillah, the chance, the opportunity came for me in January. So, um, I looked at it and I thought, you know, I can't turn this down. I see that it's a, I looked into the team. They'd be playing Europa League this season, and it was, it was a chance that you know I, I've, got, I've got to take and go and experience it. Hundred percent. Would you have been in the? Would you have been in the? How does it work? Would you have been selected for the uh, Euro, Europa League squad? Or I think there's this thing. I don't know. Excuse my ignorance, but I'm just going off championship manager and stuff. If you're below a certain age, you can get automatically registered anyway, or something like that. Uh. I don't know. I don't know how it works, to be honest. But they obviously got. Um, they went out in the group stages. So oh, okay, okay. When I came here, they weren't. They weren't in Europe League. But now that I'm here, that's their aim to get to get that Europa League positions again for next season. It's not a. It's not an easy league by any means whatsoever. It's it's the Portuguese, you know, top tier. Um, is that something that really attracted you in solidifying your decision and moving over? Yeah, I think so. Obviously, you hear about the league. I didn't know, to be honest, when you're in England, you don't really look at too many other leagues, but you hear about the, the Portuguese league a little bit, but coming here, I wanted to learn about it. And then the more that I've, the more that I've seen of it, you do see some, some good teams. Like we, we were supposed to play sport in Lisbon on the, the weekend that it got cancelled. It's mad. And mm-hmm. you're playing against them sort of teams, like you, that's, that's what you get up for. Yeah, yeah, 100%. That, that's, that's, that must be like crazily mad. And obviously, not taking away the fact that you were in the Villa squad a number of times as well, but to play in against some of these teams, you relish you, your, whole, your whole life's work is, is leading to these moments, which is unfortunate, obviously, because of COVID-19. Um, but how are the players like taken towards you? Like, obviously, I, I'm, I'm sure there's another former Villa player there as well. So there's, there's two of you that speak English. Uh, yeah, no, he, he, I played with him in England, Mark oh, England. Sorry. So um, he moved here in the summer. So obviously that was quite nice when I got here just to have someone who I already knew for a few years, like just to sort of get to know how it works here. And he, did, he doesn't speak the language either. So it's, it was quite good just to, to have someone there just to, to help me settle in. So we asked Momo Sissoko last night, like I think he was 17 or 18. and. He moved from Mosea to, to Valencia. I didn't know, other than hola uh, and a few other words in Spanish, he didn't know anything at all. Fairly young. Um, and, and he had to learn the language very quick in order to settle. Um, do, do you, have, have you been provided or is there support for you to learn Portuguese? Because it's a very difficult language, Portuguese lang- the language. Yeah, so as soon as I got here, um, they, got, they got a Portuguese teacher for me. But obviously with what's happening now, the, all the lessons got cancelled. So I'm doing it online a couple of times a week. But it's important because yeah. obviously I'm a centre back as well from, for the way I play. It's a lot of talking and organising. And if you don't, if the other players can't understand what you're saying, then it takes a big part of that your game. So for me, that was one of the most important things I need to learn straight away as soon as, as, soon as I get here because even they'll appreciate it as well, I think, because they... They, they see you look, you're making an effort to, to try and learn the language and get involved, then it's only going to help me. You're obviously used to this situation being, you know, brought up to the academies and playing at Villa and other clubs being loaned out to other clubs. How does it work? Does, 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 like, I'm just trying to ask this question more so for the young, you know, adults that are on this call at the moment who have dreams, aspirations to go and play and don't know the ins and outs. So, for you, it might be just a, a normal thing, but for us and them, it's something like this next question I'm going to ask you is, how does it work in the sense of, does the director of uh, Vitoria just, just call you or do they call your agent or do they call Villa? What's the process like? How, how does it work? Um, I think it's different for, for different moves. It's different, but 
the way this move came about was basically in, I knew from the start of the season, basically when I was at Villa, I was only playing number 23s and I knew that I wanted to, I needed to get out and try and get first team football. So I, uh, I said to my agent, obviously he knew and he was looking around and then in December, um, that's when clubs more start, start to look a little bit more because obviously for the January transfer window. And then I actually went, I went away with my dad because we had a, a little break in December, over Christmas. So I went away and then when I cut back, my agent said that the director from, from Victoria has like, expressed an interest. So within a few weeks, I was here doing a medical and signing and everything. So. So, so the director, we contacted Villa? Um, contacted my agent. Oh, sorry, your agent, sorry, your agent. Yeah. yeah. So obviously they, they were looking for a certain type of player and a certain position and obviously knew that I was, I was available sort of thing. So. So did you have any kind of inclination or indication throughout the course of the, from the start of the season up until January that, that clubs were, were looking at you or coming down? How does that work? Does, like, does, people, does your agent tell you, do your clubs tell you that this guy's coming down to watch you or anything like that? To be honest, there's, there's always people watching. Okay. Like in, in all your games, especially in the 23s, there's, there's always scouts because obviously they're looking for, for young players to come maybe on loan or, or take them permanent. So there's always people watching. But when it gets a bit more serious, then the same sort of people start probably coming to watch the games and, and feeding back to the club because obviously then they're, they're more interested. Please don't even take this as banter, but like... For us that are not in the professional game, alhamdulillah, obviously I worked at the FA previously, but like our, our understanding is of like, say FIFA, I can't remember that, that career mode where, you know, the player, I can't even remember his name now, and he gets a call up and he goes from whatever club to whatever to America and all of that. So, so, so you know, once the directors, obviously, the, the agent, um, the director from Victoria and, and the agents uh, have spoken, do Villa get in contact with USA and, and explain to you that they want you to stay or go or how does it work or... Yeah, I think they, the two clubs, obviously, then the two clubs will speak and negotiate whatever they, whatever they need to negotiate. That's between them. I don't know what mm. what happens. But um, I sort of knew my situation at Villa. I was in the last year of my contract and I didn't, and I wasn't sort of involved too much in the first team at the time. So I sort of knew that, all right, if something does come along, that they, they would probably probably let me let me go because it's a better opportunity. No, that that make that makes sense from from their perspective, and obviously for you as well, it's beneficial that you you've got something planned ahead for the next few years, inshallah, and hopefully it's it's really um, kicks off for you. I'm pretty sure you would. Um, if you, I don't know if you can answer this one, or you, I'm sure you can. Um, if you were to like say who you mimic your game on, for those who don't know you, what what current modern day centre back do you would you say you? Mim- I've seen you play, obviously, um, but who would you say mimic you? You know, you mimic or or don't you? Uh, I don't, I don't know about mimic, but I've seen the, the the two main centre backs that I look up to are, are Terry, who obviously was at Villa, is at Villa now, and Ramos. So I think they're the two. Obviously, you got Van Dijk now as well. Come on, I was gonna say that to your uncle. I'm gonna be happy about that when you're leaving man like Van Dijk out. <laughs> but I don't know. When you look at Van Dijk, it's just too easy for him. So you think, you know what? It's because he makes it really easy. Compare yourself. He's too. He makes it just look too easy. Uh, it's true, it's true. So Terry and Ramos, that's two top, two top defenders there. You worked uh, under Terry, didn't you, at Villa? Yeah, you did, you did, because Terry was there. Yeah, right? yeah, for a little bit, yeah. How is he? Good good coach? Obviously, great player. Yeah, he, you just see, even like when he joins in in training, you just see how, how good he is, like technically good. Um, his first touch, everything, when it's just, you can, you can see why he was, and even like little things, like he'll tell you that you probably never thought about because obviously his his experience everything there is yeah. to experience so he knows like the ins and outs and and defending like there's no one better I don't think nah, I agree he was, uh, when he was playing and he was at his peak even when he was young he was just one of the best um, you obviously you mentioned earlier that you're in, in Portugal at the moment and unfortunately we're going to this pandemic um, across the globe um, how, how does how does that fit into a professional footballer's life? Like you're you're in your apartment now. Uh, do, how do you do training? How does it work? It's it's a bit weird because obviously we we used to having that schedule where where you go and you do your work and then you you come home and you rest. But 
they they actually dropped off um, to all the players a bike and um, some weights and all that stuff. So we've we've been doing our sessions and and when I was at home, we were doing obviously Zoom sessions and that. So they're just trying to keep us fit for whenever we we do go back. Do you, do you have Zoom sessions as well, like um, with with the club and the players? Do you meet up daily, weekly? Um, we were at the start. We were doing it. We were doing it every day, like um, circuit training and whatever. But um, over the last couple of weeks, they've they've sort of just let us do our own sort of thing. I was speaking to Dr. Zaf, and he mentioned at Palace, like all the players have these kind of heart rate monitors and all this technology with them, so they can keep uh, track of how how they're performing. They have to go out to a certain grass field and do individual exercises. Is that is that similar with Victoria as well? Yeah, yeah. So obviously, like the bike sessions, we'll do we'll do that together, and then they'll get get all the information so they they know what that we've done enough or we need to do more or whatever. What have been what 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 would you say have been the key challenges or like during COVID nineteen for you personally? Football or non football? I don't know. I, in a way I probably enjoyed it a little bit because I obviously I got I went I got to go home and and spend a spend a month home which is a, which is a long time just being at home and, and spending that time with family so it was nice just not having nothing to do, obviously doing your training in between, but just using that time. I think just since I've been back, it's probably using that free time. That's that's one of the the things that I'm trying to trying to use better because it's there's so much time now. Where you, obviously when you're on, I'm on my own as well, so it's, it's like just not wasting it. So you mentioned you're not, you're on your own, so you're in Portugal at the moment alone. You must miss family and things like that. I'm I'm pretty sure obviously you're in regular contact, but is, is loneliness kind of getting to you in any way yeah i think i'm, I'm starting to get used to it a little bit because i obviously had the experience last year when i went to holland i lived i lived on my own a little bit but like it's only it's only an hour two hour flight here so before before this happened my mom and dad came out a couple of times and it's nice for them as well just to get, get away it's like a little holiday for them when they come as well yeah what would you say is what would you what, what do you miss from england at the moment okay pretend like coronavirus isn't happening what's the key differences what's the one thing away from family naturally do you miss in england the food because obviously <laughs> obviously here is there's not there's not um like the closest mosque here is 25 minutes away from me so obviously that's naturally where the, where the halal food is there's no halal food places here where i can i can just go and if i don't feel like cooking i can just go and and get some food quickly i have to always cook so it's where when i'm at home there's so many up. There's so many choices. I can just go anywhere. What's Chef Issa's uh, tradi- uh, dish then? The main one that he's the one. You know. I had a feeling dish. you'd ask this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I had a feeling you'd ask this. <laughs> I go on. I just, just stick to the. I just stick to the basic. Just put the put the chicken in the oven, and then just do a bit of rice. It's good food, That's man. Good food. There's a so Nando's is obviously Portuguese. Is the, haven't they got the like halal Nando's going? Like you know, we've got in Star that's, City. That's what I thought, but I, I've not found one here yet. I thought no. there'd be loads here, but I've not really found one. You got it. It's, it's a good thing. I mean, ask the ask the club, see if you can get Nando's going in in, in Victoria where you are. <laughs> it would be nice. What about like the club? Do they like say? I, I'm just asking. Sorry, I know you might think what are these questions, but just for our understanding, like say obviously you mentioned like. Uh, halal food is not always widely available etc uh, because it's kind of distance away do clubs generally not just this club do clubs generally kind of accommodate t- towards that if you needed something they can provide halal food for you yeah especially when it's at Villa they because um, they had a few I think it was a few years ago when they had a, a few more first first team players who were Muslim mm. like Gestead and them sort of players and I think they they mentioned it to the to the chefs and everything so from then, they they got every all the meat they got was halal, so they didn't serve no meat that wasn't halal. So they just done that because of the, the Muslim players in the team, which was which was good. And that's nice. And obviously, you've gone into a new um, country, new club, new players. How how are the players around you? How have they treated you? Yeah, no, it's good. Obviously, it's hard because a lot of them don't don't speak much English. There's a lot of Brazilians in the team, so you don't really have you just speak to the ones that sort of speak English and you can understand a little bit. So it's, it's, it's good getting to know, getting to know. 
No, that's that's good. But I mean, uh, who do you so far from what you've seen? You, I don't know. Have you? Yeah, yeah. You have physically trained with the club before coronavirus because you moved in January, didn't you? Yeah, I've, I've trained with them for two months. I yeah. Okay. Have you have you play, played yet for them or, or not? Oh, you, sorry. You uh, mentioned it was off season. Say that again. Sorry, you mentioned it was off season, so you couldn't have played for in the league because it was uh, when you signed it was the winter break or something wasn't it no they they had their winter break in uh, in december so when i signed obviously i was i was straight into training and everything and then we had a few games I've, I've been in on the bench a few times but i've not i've not made my debut yet what's it like in 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 terms of comparison of stadiums with fans is it, is it very similar to english football Passion. the the fans at, at this club are, are really good they I think they they want to like what I've been told is that they're they're one of the best in the league, but they they're crazy like they'll get fifteen twenty fives in each game and they'll always they'll always sell out like the away end uh, in away matches so they are they are quite quite strong supporters yeah. That's always good to to have a good strong uh, fan base. Um, you you we mentioned earlier about the the midnight Ramadan league and. This year, a few of us, what we thought was, look, it's it's really sad because last year we were doing Tarawi and after Tarawi we were coming to 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 the to Villa Park to play those games uh, where young people could get involved in and keep fit and healthy. Not saying that because of Ramadan they can't keep fit and healthy during the day, but it was just something else to do. So we came up obviously with this idea of of speaking to professional footballers for the first 45 minutes an hour and then having online physical workout sessions the next hour. How important do you think it is to to have something in place for for youth, for you know you know people who are who are fasting at the moment? No, nah, I think it's good. Obviously, I like I said to you before um, when you messaged me last week, I, I started watching it as well a little bit. So <laughs> I listened to Doctor Zafs and Adils and 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 the one last night as well. So it's it's been good. I've enjoyed it as well. Just 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 watching it as well. So it's good. Obviously, at this sort of times, like I said, we used to. To going to Ramadan League or maybe going to the gym. Some people be going to the gym at this time and doing their stuff, but obviously everything's closed now, so it's just giving some something else to do. I just always felt like, um, even when Alhamdulillah was given in uh, you know the opportunities to work in the football industry, because it's not an easy industry to to work in or, or get involved in, uh, because people have this perception of of the football industry being you know celebs and millionaires, and it's far from that, you know. Um, alhamdulillah i've had the privilege of working there and I, I just one of the things that came out for me was once i had the opportunity to work for the fa is i wanted to make this kind of platform and players accessible to the to the general mass um, and for me that's so important would you agree like it's, it's important to uh, football players are accessible to an extent obviously not giving up all their time and everything to to the general public to the young to the youth as role models yeah yeah no definitely i um... I think that's something that maybe later on I'd wanna even even soon I'd wanna sort of get involved in a little bit. It's like that sort of um like the youth coaching and, and that sort of thing. Not that I wanna be a coach or anything, but that's something that I've 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 thought about just just locally as well, just with with the young kids doing training and that sort of thing. So it's something that I, I would wanna do as well. No, that's that's really nice to hear and I think it's it's really important and the reason I say that is the sad reality of where what we're, what we're going through at the moment with the virus as well as pre pre coronavirus is we've got a lot of young people who have role models um, who probably shouldn't be their role models gangsters and TV stars and and you know t- you know historic movies and they want to live that life and I I remember delivering a workshop recently and I, I was mentioning to some young people that you need to look at more accessible role models people within your community who you can look up to um, that's an easier easier kind of achievement to me rather than looking at these um role models that these young people see that they can cause them problems um so it's it's nice to is no one here that you, you know you're mentioning as well that it's something that you'd want to do in the future obviously no pressures on you you're you're very early at stages of your career as well although i wouldn't say early because you've been playing since you're probably six seven years old but yeah no i think i think that's important as well like you said the the, the role models that are accessible because i i always mention that um but the one that I sort of look up to is, is not even in football, it's, it's more in Ali in, in cricket and what he's, he's done because it's so accessible. Like he's, he's exactly the same as us from the same sort of area. 
and he's just he's just worked hard and 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 got to the top of and how many how many games he's played for England and he's still playing for England and without without compromising his religion or or anything like that he's always been true to true to himself and it's, that's something that is that you just look up to and you think wow like this is possible to do something like that. I'm sorry, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on you now. Like you mentioned, Moin Ali, and obviously he's, he's your he's your guy, he's your boy. You need to plug him and time to come on the show. Inshallah, he's got loads of fans as well. That have a word with him, please. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm sure you probably love to. Inshallah. Okay, awesome. So Ramadan at the moment, Ramadan Mubarak. Um, Ramadan Mubarak. How, how's uh, silly question? How how has Ramadan been for you? You know, in Portugal. I know you said you know you, yeah you arrived just as Ramadan started in Portugal. This is is this your first year away from family during Ramadan? Um, yeah, well, first year away as in doing it myself. I've been away with football and and obviously been in hotels. But this is my first year like on my own, having to do my own iftar, sehri, everything. So it's, it's I've enjoyed it actually. I've I've actually enjoyed it obviously. I don't have to have the pressure. Of, I just have to cook myself and, and do that. But it's been nice. What's the 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 thing you miss most about the general Ramadans that you've gone through in the past? It's just the the masjid, I think, and I think that's that's with everyone. Like, especially, but even even without Ramadan, I think that's what I've I've appreciated more when I do come home is that how many mosques there are to to just be able to go around the corner and and pray. Pray normal salah, or whereas whereas here it's not it's not that easy. You can't just just go on every corner. There's not a mosque. For us. Whereas when I'm at home, it, it, it's, that's what I've I probably took for granted in in the past. But now, whenever I go back, I try and just just make the most of it. Now, obviously, it's um it's really important um, that we we obviously stick to the guidelines, the government guidelines. It's not just a not only is it a government guideline, it's an Islamic value and Islamic. Um, you know, there's many hadith from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Bukhari and Tirmizi as well that state regarding pandemics. And what would your message be to those, you know, to the to young people or the masses in regards to staying at home? Yes, we're grieving that there's no masjids and we can go to to pray tarawih. What would your message be? I think it's just obviously like like we've, like we've been told as well. That just just make dua that it, it is it is lifted from us and that should I assume we will we will be meeting again in in masjids and. And it will go back to normal. So it's just obviously this little period where we're not. But uh, but then it's the same thing. And if you, what I what I learned the other day is that if you're if you had the intention to to be praying in the masjid anyway, so, so, so. if you're doing it at home, then you, you you're getting that reward for that inshallah. So when it does when they do reopen that, then it will be even it will be even sweeter to to be with the brothers and, and enjoy that time as well. So awesome and amazing because. That's so true. Like in the Malamal bin Niyat, so it is a clear hadith. So it, it's your intention. Islam is so simple and easy, but sometimes, unfortunately, we we try to make it far more difficult than it is. So we can stay and we can still do the ibadat that we are supposed to do by staying at home. So, like you just mentioned, it's all about the intention. I'm so glad yeah. you mentioned that. Yeah, hundred percent. So in, uh, sorry, you did you say something? No. no. So I was saying just previously, you know. Um, Ramadan at previous clubs, the England setup, etc. Um, question on loads of people. You know, before this show, people have asked, obviously asked me questions to ask you because they're not confident coming on and ask you the question. Um, how are the clubs treated uh, players, or, the, or what's their understanding or awareness around Ramadan, and and you know what it means to Muslim players? The, the, it's always been good, good from what I've experienced. When I was at Villa, obviously the last. The few seasons before last, it, it always fell in um, pre-season, which is normally, which is obviously a quite tough, tough period. But they've understood, okay, I'm going to be fasting. So whether I do a little bit less than everyone else, or whether I, whether I don't do a double session if we've got two sessions that day, they they've always like helped me out with that. And it's been the same with England as well. Um, I think last year was probably the the most eye-opening for me when. It was that we had a two round tournament with England in the twenties, and um, I knew obviously a couple of weeks that I had the. I didn't know the squad, but I thought I, I knew I would be in in contention to get called up, 
and I knew it was going to be the last last few nights of Ramadan. So I, I thought I'd I'd phone the the manager and let him know that obviously I'll be fasting because I didn't want to turn up and then be like, oh, I'm I'm fasting. I might not be able to do this. Or do you know what I mean? So it was out of respect. I thought I'd phone him and let him know that if you are going to decide to pick me, I will be fasting. And and then he showed decision and then he picked me and then like as soon as he as soon as he picked me, I got he phoned me, the, the sports scientist phoned me, the physios phoned me, all asking like wow. what do I what what will I need um during the night or when what times will I be eating and and all all sorts of things. So when I got there they made it easy for me. They brought they brought Sari up to my room and um the first meeting that we had, the manager sort of told the whole team. Like he'd gone, up, he'd gone away and done his own research and, wow. and sort of informed the whole team that, all right, this is why he's doing it and these are the times that he's going to be eating and we need to respect that. He's not going to be coming down to meet and he's not going to be coming down to, to lunch and dinner with us. He's going to be eating at his own times and they just, they just made it easy for me. So obviously he, he obviously went out his way to learn and to try and understand a little bit about it and then he asked me questions as well, so it was good. That is unbelievable to hear, mashallah. Like I would never have expected that um, for someone to go out and do their own research and provide accessibility to to understand one's faith. Uh, who is the manager, by the way? Are you like to? Are you willing to say? Or? Uh, it, it, it was Paul Simpson. It was Paul Simpson. He was obviously the under twenties manager last season. So, yeah. like the respect that you have for them sort of people, it, it goes up because you don't you don't have to. Yeah. Like so, you could have just went along with it or. But he actually went out and wanted to learn about it and sort of ask questions if he didn't understand. That's, that's just, that's so good to hear, honestly, genuinely, that's so good to hear because sometimes, like, you hope and you wish that same sort of mentality is at non-league level and grassroots level as well. Like, we, we were playing, obviously, we have a Sunday league team, etc. And last year, we had a final which fell in Ramadan and, yeah, we chose to play in the league. Yes, it was our decision, etc. Um, but, maybe having that kind of awareness. I know the FA are doing some amazing stuff around fact sheets and getting things out to leagues, etc. But it's good to know from a top level, there's that understanding. I think now that needs to filter down to lower levels as well, because it's affecting, in my opinion, grassroots football as well. Yeah, obviously you, you'll know more than me about, about that sort of area because I've, I've not really, I don't really know yeah. too much about how, how it works. And that. So, so yeah, I think they're, they're definitely doing a lot sort of in the FA from what I've seen anyway about trying to try to understand these sort of things and and help people. So do you, do you know any of like can you remember any any situations like in pre-season obviously you mentioned like for those who don't know you mentioned it just a few seconds ago pre-season is a lot more difficult than the normal season. For those who don't know why is it more difficult than the normal season? I think because they you're doing a lot. Like the first the first week I can remember when we went to Portugal the first week we didn't really touch the ball. It was just it was just running. Well if they want to get you've been off for a for a month or six weeks. Yeah. They need to get you back fit, get back back strong again so you're ready for the game. So the the games are are, are tough. So you need to be fit and, and ready for them. And uh, did you were you involved in any game? Like you may obviously mentioned the the England setup in the, in the tournament. It was Ramadan. Uh, were you playing during iftar time at any of the games at all? No, because when I when I um, when I went last year, the, I actually got injured before the before the tournament started. So like two three days before the tournament started, I got injured. So I came back. So I didn't I didn't actually play in no games. But obviously I know people who have have played games in there. A lot of them, a lot of them say like they don't really, they don't really feel it, or they don't. Obviously, they feel it, but they feel like they're concentrating more and, and that sort of thing. I've not, I've not had any games so far where I've, where I've had to fast because it's all felt like before the season started and that sort of thing. I know it's not your job, but being you know a Muslim and a professional footballer, I could say you could say in one way it is your duty. Would you say that you can help? improve people's understanding of Islam uh, being a you know a professional footballer I, I think I think definitely because even like situations where I've been in where where when you go away and you share rooms and, and like it's, it's time for Salah and you, you pray yeah and 
and some of them will will obviously under, they obviously know about it, but then they might they might want to ask a question or they might want to want to know a little bit more what they might be very what how many times whatever. So I think what I've learned is that you know I need to from that them sort of situations I thought you know I need to go and learn learn myself and educate myself before because these like this could be their one conversation that they're gonna have so with someone about Islam. So you can't really be be given the wrong the wrong image. But a lot of it is is the way you conduct yourself, like your behaviour as well, I think, because obviously they know you're Muslim. They might not ask you questions, but they, they see the way you're behaving. And they're gonna think, okay, that's that's Islam, which which sometimes is it's not. I should know this. How old are you, Isa? 22. Mashallah, like your, your knowledge base and your, your understanding and your maturity is finalized. May Allah like give you more and more um, maturity like this, man. Like what you're saying is so spot on because people don't ask. Like, Alhamdulillah, I've had the, the privilege of studying Islam. I went to Madrasa, etc. But people um, who are not Muslims are more, m- most of the time are not going to ask you questions, but they're going to look upon your character to see how you are and how a Muslim person behaves to make a judgment of Islam. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's true because I, obviously I've been in situations where some non-Muslims have said to me, "Oh, how come how come he's doing that and, and he's Muslim as well?" And you're like, he maybe it's not. Yeah, that's not really Islam, but that's what he's that's what he's doing. So you've got to be careful as well. Not that like, you're not doing it to, to for for other people to yeah to tell you you're doing good or you're not doing good or whatever, but. Of a person who's Muslim, it's, it's their other yeah. and their characteristics. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot, obviously, a lot of young people watching the show now as we as we're streaming live on Facebook and on Zoom. Um, and I'm not going to ask you this question because I'm sure every interview, everything that you do, everyone asks you about Asian, your football Asian, your football. Um, I don't want to go down that because I, I I've been in the same situation. I've only worked for the FA for a small uh, two three years, uh, four years, and every interview I've ever done is about Asian football I'm not saying it's not an important question absolutely it's really important to, to raise awareness on it but what would you say to the young people listening is a secret or not not secret what, what advice would you, would you say to someone who's, who's trying to get into professional football I think for, from what, what I've experienced my own self is probably the, the level of sacrifice that you've got to do because probably a lot of people won't see it because you, you, the amount of weddings and like family weddings you miss and and them sort of things and like even little things like going out with your with your friends in going for a meal or something when you've got a train or game the next day you've got to think twice about it because if you, if you're out a bit too late then it's gonna affect you the next day so I think that's probably probably one of the main things because a lot of people don't do that a lot of people think they can do both. They can uh, they can spend they can chill and, and, and spend time with their mates for as long as one and then be doing be working hard every single day as well. I think you're spot on because obviously we've got a Yusuf Cisse who's who used to play for Stallions and now he's at Blackpool and um, obviously knowing him personally and, and watching him sac- the sacrifices that he you know put in place, he was training himself on his own like left right center and then even when he became pro he was doing stuff away from the club he's doing things he's still doing things now even i think that sacrifice a lot of young people haven't fully understood yet in my opinion those who who feel like they're doing enough but they this they need to be doing a lot more yeah i think obviously the hard the hard work is it's normal you have to put that in that's that's like that's a given, a given. because yeah yeah exactly but the other side of it is like, like I said, the going out and, and that sort of thing is you've got to get your rest in as well, which is which is important and it plays a big part in it. I know you're not a scientist, but like, does it does it does it matter about genes as well? Because look, the reason I'm asking about genes and the genome system, etc., is because look, you come from a family like obviously your uncles are like pretty much anyone that's played football in the West Midlands knows Zah Suleiman as in like. People still talk to this day. How was Zah not a professional footballer? Mashallah, he was amazing and and a similar characteristic to yourself. Very humble. Uh, was it was it important having those kind of role models in your when you were growing up? Uncles who were playing football, dads who were playing football, and do you have other siblings who are playing football as well? Yeah, I think so because obviously I, I think I was a bit, I I was too young to. 
to see him when he was when he was like when everyone raved about him. And everything. Baller, man. I think he had a few he had a few injuries Baller. with his knees. So, um, but you know, like like whenever you go to to like this to Moor Lane and that, they all they're always talking about him and about how good he was. But um, yeah, I think that that helped. Obviously, you see, like my dad plays cricket as well. He's played for a long time, so just that sporting sporting background is. It, it was good. I think it, it did help me. And what about your your brother brothers? Have you got any other brothers that are playing football as well? Uh, yeah, my little brother's playing. He was he was at um he was at Villa for a little bit, and um, he's just sort of looking looking for a new club at the moment as well. So he's he's sort of involved as well a little bit. I seen him um, at the Ramadan League as well, bro. He's He's an ex talent as well, man. That that kid is gonna be phenomenal, inshallah. Yeah, but the, like I said, that's that's another thing that I'll I'll talk about experience as well. It's him, he's got the other side where he wants to chill a little bit too much as well. Yeah. So that's something that he needs to learn as well. That he he can't do both. He can't. He's got he's got talent, but he needs to he needs to knock it down a little bit. You know what? Like, obviously. Inshallah, he's going to find a new club. Uh, prayers and always, Inshallah, he finds a new club. But in the meantime, if he's interested, I know your uncle might not be too keen on it. Time to come play for Stallions because <laughs> your uncle's obviously a Rangers player, so there's a bit of rivalry there. But time to come play for us, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Rangers fan as well, so that ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no worries. Fair play, fair play. Um, it's good to know that, you know, like you're in a position where you can advise him as well. Uh, as well as other young people that are, are listening uh, on this uh, conference uh, video call as well. I was going to move on to, if I'm not mistaken, you know, you I, I believe you're the first British Asian to captain uh, the England teams at, at the levels that you played at. How how does that feel, man? How, how does it feel? I remember when I was a school captain, you know, in the school, secondary school, I went to Hodgill School. I played in the teams with Luke Moore, Stefan Moore. Uh, I, I'll, tell you a little, I'll tell you a little story. Like I only got in because I looked at the list of players. Um, you had to put your name and your positions down and no one put left winger. I was never a left winger. I never even had a left foot. So I put myself down as a left winger and I got in the team. You know what? I don't even like cricket, but I got into a school cricket team because no one put down themselves as a wicket keeper. I didn't even know the rules of cricket. I was a school wicket keeper as well. So um, when, I was a school, when I was made school, the captain of the school team once, I was buzzing. Like It was mad for me. Like How must it have been for you and what levels did you captain the England teams? Yeah, um, I first captain at under under 16s. I remember it was in Norway. We had um, it was like a little tournament in Norway, spring, and then um, I was I don't think I understood. I don't, I don't think I realized how big it was at the time because when I when I was playing, I was sort of captain at Villa at my my age and that, so it was sort of a bit normal. But then I think afterwards, when I think after the game. One of one of the coaches told me that you're the first the first Asian to to captain England at any level, wow. and then it's like, whoa, like that's 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 something serious, which was which was obviously pride for my family, for me, everything, and um, and I captained that under under 18s and under 20s as well. Was that the, the which one? Which year did you win the World Cup with the England team? Uh, we won the Euros uh, under yeah. 19s. But I, I, I was the captain. You were the captain then. Were you playing? Were you in that tournament? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played, played all, played all the games and beat beat Portugal in the final. That was when that was when uh, Rian just no is that Rian? Who's that? No, that, he he was in the he was in the seventeenth World Cup. The one you beat Portugal. Who was who was in that squad? Was it? Uh, Mason Mount. Mason Mount. That was it. Yeah, but that that summer. Um, the 17s won the World Cup. Um, then we won the Euros, and then the t- under 20s won their World Cup as well. So like that, that summer was big, big in English football, and they made they made a, a big deal about it. So it was, it was a good summer. And uh, do you, do you still get on with the, like all the lads that you, you obviously you, you become like a strong group of players, and uh, you you build bonds and relationships. Do you still chat and communicate with them? Do you, you follow each other's careers and stuff? Yeah, obviously you you see what each of us like achieving and that sort of thing, and it's you don't obviously keep in contact with everyone, but when you do bump into bump into them, it's that thing where you can you, you've got that that thing in common where you 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 both remember it and you can speak about it and 
it, it's nice when you have them them sort of moments. But you see, like some of the players in the team, like where they're where they're at now, and they're flying like in the prem and everything. So it just out shows you, that. Out of your group, who do you, which player would you say is, is gone on to achieve the most at the moment, in your opinion? Um, prob- probably Trent Alexander Arnold. Played with him on the on the 16s, 17s, 18s, even 19s as well, and he's won the won the Champions like, League and probably win the Prem as well. He's only 21. Did you still chat to him? Right back in the world as well, so it's, it's crazy. Did you still chat to him? You, you could always see that like he was he was that good. At right back, he was he was a top goal scorer for the season and all all them sort of things. Take three kicks, penalties. So you could always see that he was he was a level above. Do you still chat to Trent? Yeah, yeah. So I went down last last um at the, at the beginning of the season actually when he, when they played Bournemouth because another Bournemouth keeper, so I went down and watched watched the game, so it was, it was good. That's good to know, man. Good to like it's like, like obviously you it's not about Trent and all these players, it's about yourself and what you've achieved, alhamdulillah, it's amazing and hopefully you continue to achieve many more great things. Um before we kind of close and, and open it up to some of the, the guys that want to ask questions because the box, the chat box is going mad. Um, uh, I, I was going to say to you, whilst you're at Villa, who who did you get on the most with from from the senior players are you, are you, are you, when you were at Villa? Um, I don't want to get you in trouble because in case you leave someone else out and someone says, yo, how come you never mentioned me? No, no, no. At Villa, there was, like in my age group, there was a lot of us. There was like six, seven of us who started at under nines, and we were playing together at under twenty threes. So we sort of went through the whole of of the youth together. So probably probably them because obviously I was, I was with them all the time and like sort of grew up with them. Is it, but from from a senior perspective, the players that you were around was there any specific player that kind of you took a keen interest in or gave you advice regularly just you know mentored you so to speak uh probably do you know really good stead yeah yeah yeah. Like, yeah like he was someone who whenever you'd go up because obviously i was only younger 17 18 and whenever you'd go up with the first team there's always someone who would come over and shake your hand and make you feel welcome and like have a little chat to you so probably Rudy Gustet here. And what about from the England setup? What with who who I played with? Yeah, who you played with? Um, usually, you, players players usually say um, uh, their roomies, the guys that they share rooms with. But was it was it like that with you, or was it fixed who you were sharing rooms with? Yeah, so it was a keeper. You know, do you know the keeper from Bournemouth, Ramsdale? Yeah, uh, Ramsdale. Yeah, yeah. So I'd always share a room with him and. He's probably the one who I'll probably stay in contact with now as well. So it's probably him. So tell us then, finally, your. Uh, we used to do five aside, but then Momo just went a bit mad yesterday and done seven players because he played. Because <laughs> obviously he's played with Nedved and all of yeah, these players. Yeah, I know. I seen that. I was thinking, wow, he's, <laughs> his team his team sick. Yeah. Who would you say is your uh, seven aside team? You like whether you played with them or haven't played with them. Uh-huh. Up to you. Uh, seven or five. I'll give you f- five aside teams. Yeah, go on. Give us five. Probably, like I mentioned before, Terry and Ramos at the back. No one's going to get past them. Defensive team. Gonna, it looks like a defensive team. You they, got. They, yeah, but I, I've not got a keeper. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Fair enough. And and they both score goals. How many goals have they both scored in the career? True. Um, Zidane. Wow. I, I've watched every. I think every video of Zidane on YouTube. Um, and then Ronaldo and Messi. Wow, that is a team that is. Uh, you don't. You don't need a keeper. With you don't need a keeper there. I, 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 this this question is not even on my list. I was just gonna. I don't know if you're not allowed to answer it. Don't answer it, please. I don't want you to get in any trouble at all. If if there was a manager in the Premier League, every single club said they want you to come and play for them right now, um, or in the future, whatever. Which manager would attract you the most to go and play under? If you can answer it, if you can't, then... I know, I know what answer you want me to give. No, 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 no. <laughs> I want you to give your answer, man. I want you to give your answer. Um, 
<laughs> nah, probably probably Guardiola. Okay. Like I've watched documentaries and imagine how much you'd learn under him and like the amount of of knowledge he has and how good his teams are, just the way he plays, it's, you'd learn so much from him. I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw that the article that came out when he, Pep was at Bayern Munich. Don't get me wrong. I love people think I don't like Guardiola. I love Guardiola. I think he's amazing. I just think Klopp's come in and he's obviously done the business and you know like he's doing the stuff. So you can't you can't even hate on Klopp as well. But I remember that article when he came out and he was at Bayern Munich and there was a link of Issa Suleiman going to 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 Bayern. I was like, oh please, man! I wish the guy goes because anyway, let, that's that's a different story <laughs> in itself. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hand over to Saeed who's got uh, who's gonna unmute some uh, people's mics um, and they can ask you. Uh, Few questions, if that's okay, sir. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Side over to you. Yeah. First, yeah. First, we got Akba. Akba, you can ask you a question. Sam, welcome, me, sir. How are you? Okay, bro. Welcome, Sam. All right, thanks. Um, basically, I just wanted to ask, um, what would you say? Um, what would, what do you think made you stand out from the rest of the squad to be chosen as captain uh, of the England squad? Um, Good question. Probably, probably like the the organization when I was when I was playing part of part of the way I play and at centre back you're always organizing and talking and in training I do that a lot like cause that was that was what I thought all right that's probably gonna get me that would help me get in the team so maybe that they probably seen that and thought yeah he'll he'll keep us organized and that sort of thing. Thank you. Thanks, Akbar. Uh, next, we got Kasim. Just trying to find Kasim. Kasim, go ahead. Salam alaikum, Isa. Are you okay, bro? Alaikum, Salam. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I'm okay. Thanks. Um, so, I don't know if you remember, we played on Tuesday. You know, mom's in school, so you're selling them, bro. You know, like your family, we, or, you know, Uncle Zahn, all these, that, so we grew up with them. So, my question is about family. So, would you say, Dad's influence was a big factor in you going to professional and without him, would you say you would have reached, like say without his mentoring and guidance, would you have reached the same level you are today? Not obviously taking away what you've done in your own achievement, but that support, that guidance, obviously your whole family, you got Cricket, Uncle Wide, Uncle Zaid, so Azar, sorry. So, you know, would you say that made a big impact on your career, that support? Yeah, yeah, massive because like my dad, he I never missed a training session or a game because no matter what, if my dad was working or whatever, he'd always he'd always get me there. And, and if he was working or if he couldn't do it one day, my uncles would take me. So yeah. that support to, to be able to take it every single training session, every single game, and I think that's what a lot of a lot of people don't have. They don't have that um, that person if you their parents might not think. Oh, what's the point? Why well, I, I can't take them today? I can't take them every single day. Like, so that's that. That was important for me. My family taking me and supporting that. Obviously, my mom making sure that you're doing your education and all that sort of stuff, which which I was doing in school. I didn't leave school early or anything. So, but they they understood that you know this could be a a route or they take it serious. It wasn't just like a a hobby. Yeah, yeah, I get because my uncles are my uncles. I they grew up with Uncle Wise and everybody, and they always say how you guys they're just into their football, whether it's cricket, whatever sport it is, and they're passionate about it. But yeah, so it's good to see that obviously you right. come from the results of the hard work so much. And I'm, I'm glad that, and yeah, it's good speaking to you, bro. I'll probably see you on Tuesday again sometime. Moses. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, thanks, Kasim. Um, next, we've got Sophia. Go ahead, Sof. Hello, Asla Alaikum. Are you keeping Isa? Are you good, yeah? I I got a question for Sufyan actually. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Let me ask you first, then obviously, and then obviously uh, you can go ahead. Okay, okay. Just just for the people listening, obviously there's a lot of young people listening and they'll probably watch back. Um you're a big role model to a lot of us, whether that's people older, whether that's people younger, because there's not a lot of British Asians, uh, especially that come from exactly uh, the same type of communities that we come from. So big respect for you anyway. Um, I just wanted to ask, 
if you could just let people know what type of challenges you face uh, just growing up and to the point that you are now to reach the top level? No, uh, I'm respectful. I appreciate all that. But um, I think it was probably the challenges on the pitch. Like, alhamdulillah, I've been, I know you spoke to, to Adil last week and he mentioned like challenges like injuries and all that sort of stuff. I've, I've, been, I've been okay with that. I've not had no serious injuries or anything. But probably going out on loan, like when I went out on loan to a couple of League Two teams and I just seen, it was like an eye opener for me. I thought, well, you use that probably see it more because obviously. In the men's football, it's like they're doing everything they can to win, and it's all about winning. Some of them, you think they're not even they're not even that good, but yeah. they give everything, and that's what I learned. It opened my eyes. Like you've got to take this serious because these are like fighting for their families, like they're fighting for their their mortgages and all that sort of stuff. So they're not going to let a young kid come and and take their position. Yeah, hundred percent. I know you kind of answered it before, uh, in terms of your barriers that you faced. Uh, just for people like us, obviously you come from the same community as I mentioned. What kind of barriers, like specifically, did you face? Maybe not on the pitch or just off the pitch, as a young Pakistani Muslim from Asian communities, where obviously it's a deprived areas that we live in. To be honest, because I, I was at Villa all all my all my career, like this. There, there weren't really no barriers. I think they, they sort of understood that. Or even going up when I was out there, there was only I was probably the only, the only Asian Pakistani there in the whole in the whole youth team. But there, there weren't really no barriers as such. They, they sort of helped yeah. me and, and made it easy for me. What about your question, Isa, to to Sufyan? You can't let him go like that. Ask him the question, please. No, 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 me gone, me gone. No, 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 Sufi, you've got to stay. You've got to stay. <laughs> Who's better at uh, acting, at head tennis, you or Umar Zaman? Who's been winning? He's done one, hasn't he? Yeah, he's done one. He's like, <laughs> what was that? What was that? Oh, he's here. Yeah, he's he's back. I said, Who's better? Who's been winning? You or, you or Umar Zaman? Um, I think it's one all from the other day, you know, but obviously we're fasting in it, so we're just taking a little light session. <laughs> just got to keep it moving. <laughs> Thanks, Sof. Keep, Thank you. Keep, keep doing your thing, man. Nice one. I'll speak to you soon. Safe. Um, thanks, thanks Sof. Sof. Um, there's one one uh, question on Facebook. I know we kind of alluded on it at all uh, already, sorry, Isa. Um, someone's asked on Facebook, why isn't there more British Asians? Shah? has asked the question, why isn't there more British Asian players in, Eng in English football? And I know we kind of touched on it, but could you give your view on that question? Um, I, don't, I don't know. Like I said, it's the, the question that everyone, everyone asks. They, they always ask it, but I don't, I don't know. I think um, the FA, they're doing, they are doing a lot like to try and answer the question or to try and get more people involved. Like we had... I had a, a Zoom chat with, um, I don't know if you know Zesh, Zesh Rama. Yeah. Yeah, like we had a Zoom chat with him and a few like other younger, younger players, like British Asians, and just sort of asked them questions and that sort of thing. But he never really sort of mentioned it once. It was all about just, you've got to do your your thing, put everything in and, and probably work double as hard. But it was never sort of, why there isn't enough for mm. so I don't, I don't know i have my little i've got my loads of opinions but i'll give you the, the shortest one for me is you know the ones that are there at the moment such as yourselves such as the hamza chowdhury such as the other british asian players is for you guys to inshallah excel as much as possible that will then filter down to young people and say you know this guy's a role model i want to do i want to be where he is i want to be on the pitches that he's playing on i want to be in the teams that he's on he's playing with that's my kind of short-term opinion on on how I can see why. Uh, I know there isn't enough British Asians, but they could be dependent on how successful you guys are, inshallah, as well. And I hope you are. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, yeah, that's hundred percent. If you if you see someone who's who's like you and like in the same position that you're from, at the top, then it makes you think, oh yeah, it's possible. So that's what I'm. I'm like I'm at that point where I need to start my career and try and 
try and get to that point where I'm I'm getting to as high as possible. And then maybe one day it could be a, a course for someone else just to think, okay, it's possible. Isa, thank you so much as always um, for coming on, for being who you are. I, I genuinely make dua that you um, excel and you 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 are have an amazing career in, in Portugal and you go on further and further, inshallah. Uh, make dua for you. Um, thank you thank for coming you. on. No problem. Thanks for having me. Do you have See any you final soon. words that you want to say before you go? No. I think you've, you've, you've said it already, so it's been good. Chatting Thanks. to you now. Thanks, Isa. Thank you very much. Guys, everyone else who's on, obviously Jam's going to come in now to deliver the online workout session. Um, so I'm just going to get Jam. Oh, sorry, Isa, before you go, unless you've gone already. I Hold think, on. Yo, yeah, one quick question. I've just looked at the chat. Apparently, um, Nando's isn't Portuguese, something you learn new. Apparently, it's South African. But yeah, you know what? We'll do some research and I'll find out what it is. Let's. Uh, we'll have to open one. Take care, Isa.